And I think we're live, yes, we are. G'day everyone, uh, popping in for our usual uh, Friday chat. Uh, just let me check I've got all of these turned off. I didn't have that one turned off. Um, so pop in the chat just to say hi. We are on pre-show. Let me start the timer. So I can put all of the uh, appropriate times in. Um, so hi, everyone. I'm just saying hello in the chat. Let me bring up that. Oh, I can make that a bit bigger, actually. So we're going to have about... Oh, 10 minutes or so of just pre-chat where you can all just say hi. Finally made a live, uh, Solora said. Good to see you actually here. Yeah, this is the new time for me uh, for the moment due to daylight saving. So it's I've been popping on earlier, I suppose, European and US time because uh, we started daylight savings a, a couple of weeks ago. Um, so let's see who's here anyway. So do say hi in the chat when you're coming in. Um, so Gerald was saying hi. Um, John is also saying hi. BNB Films is saying hey. Uh, Solaris has just put on there saying it's first time he's made a live showing, which is fantastic as well. Uh, Ray says uh, hi, David. Hope you're well, dude. Enjoying your coffee. I'm gonna have a real coffee today, not the other coffee. It's cold today here. Stupid Melbourne weather in November. We're only having a top of 14 degrees Celsius today. It's ridiculous. Uh, and then we go up to the high 20s again by Monday. Uh, it's typical spring weather here. It's up and down uh, like a yo-yo. So it's a pretty cold one. So Kerry's going to bring me in a coffee, actually, uh, this morning because um, she's off today. Um, Chris said, hello, David. Beautiful day in Los Angeles. Good Corona day. Yeah, I wish it was here as well. Um, Shaver said, um, sup, David. Um, so I just woke up late. Um, hospo life. Okay, hope you're feeling okay. Studio 96 has just said hello. Billy's also saying hi, David. Uh, Gerald says just three months till your USA trip. I know how fast is it coming around, Gerald? Um, I did organise my visas a couple of uh, last week, I think. Uh, so they're all ready to go now. Uh, so we're just now waiting uh, for things. We're getting really excited because it is starting to get uh, pretty close. Uh, so I'm really excited. Can't wait to meet all of you Americans over there and, and WPPI is going to be so much fun. Uh, the other thing too is we're going to have meetups sort of all over the place. So, you know, we'll have some meetups in LA and Santa Monica, hopefully. And also we're going to Vegas. You're all welcome to join us on Vegas through the trips we're going to do there and to the desert, uh, at the canyons and things like that that Gerald's organizing. Um, and then we're, we're going to go up to Yosemite and we can have a meet up somewhere in San Francisco as well, which could be great uh, as well. So I'm so looking forward to meeting all of you if possible. Uh, the following year, we'll probably go to Europe. So then we'll meet up with the European viewers uh, then as well, uh, which should be great too. Um, who else have we got uh, popping in? Um, Rob, oh, Ray, sorry. Uh, top of 14, ha, that's our summer. <laughs> I oh know it's freezing here. The funny thing was two days ago or something we were high 20s and now it's down to 14 today as the top. Um, but it goes straight back up on, I think it's uh, high 20s by next week, I think. Um, but as soon as it hits summer, we'll be fine again. Um, yeah, it's 27 degrees on Monday, so it heats up again. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to say. Um, ben said, uh, bloody early, mate, laugh out loud. I know, Ben, this is, a, this is the time I do now, seeing we got daylight savings now. Um, hi from uh, Idaho. Kevin said, hello, David, and everyone. Lee has said, hello, David, from the UK. G'day, Lee. Hopefully I can catch up with you uh, after next year, uh, as I'll be in the UK as well. Triple um, Zero Seven said, when it's uh, too cold for coffee, vodka or rum do nicely. <laughs> I know, I could have had that this morning, couldn't I? I love it. Um, Bjorn says, hi from rainy Germany. I think it's going to rain here today, actually, too, Bjorn. Um, hi, David, uh, from Glen uh, in Hastings, England. Hi, Glen, how are you? Um, oh, Yosemite, uh, I have to make that. Went in 207, amazing. Yeah, I can't wait, actually. I'm really looking forward to that. Snowing here in Michigan. Wow, you are snowing early, uh, MJ. Um, or is that usual for this time of year? We've got fairly bad bushfires already starting here in Australia. Uh, the whole of New South Wales and Queensland here, are, uh, there's fires everywhere, so it's pretty bad. 
uh, I think we've got temperatures in the north up to around 45 degrees Celsius. So um, it won't be long until we've, we've got temperatures like that, I would say. Um, now, a couple of things I thought I'd share with you um, before we... Oh, no, I might mention that at the start of the live show. We've still got about three or four minutes before we uh, start the real show. Because um, I wanted to talk about an issue I had with the A9 on the weekend. So I thought I'd discuss that with you all. Got some interesting things to share today. That, look, there's not much in the Sony rumours. I mean, there's little things we can talk about, about the Sigma and things like that, and some Sony A7 IV uh, stuff. Um, also going to talk about Leica and stuff, or Leica and stuff like that as well. So we're going to have some interesting things to talk about anyway. Um, ben said, hammering with rain here at the moment, Dave. It's coming your way. Oh, there you go. Thanks, Ben. Ben, ben uh, is a friend of mine. He only lives, uh, what, 15 minutes away from me. So <laughs> we're obviously in for a bit of rain. Uh, Ray said, shooting a wedding tomorrow and probably seven degrees. Wow, that's cold for a wedding, Ray. I'm off to watch my TV shows, so I'll watch this show in editing on Sunday, uh, which is what I usually do. Love listening to the show I'm working. No problem at all, Ray. Uh, it's good that you do uh, follow me. Guys, if you can, uh, there's about 50-odd watching now. If you can give me a thumbs up, it makes a big difference because YouTube doesn't give out notifications half the time. So I would really appreciate it if you can give me a thumbs up. It just lets others know that we're live. Uh, so I do appreciate that, particularly as, you know, like I said, uh, I'm not sponsored by anyone. Um, so that does help the channel uh, as well. So I'd love it if you could do that. Um, what else have we got? Rick said, hey, Dave, all, hey, all cloudy and chilly in Brooklyn, New York. Yeah, you guys are going all into your winter now, whereas we're the opposite. We're going into summer, but you wouldn't know it today because it's quite cold here today. Um, MJ, thank you so much, MJ, for liking that. I really appreciate that, guys. Thanks so much. People are uh, upping it now. So thank you so much. Uh, we at 10, two minutes to go, and we'll start the show. Um, had a great wedding last weekend, which was really good. Uh, posted a couple of videos uh, of my studio shoot. If you haven't watched those, check them out down below. Uh, they were the last two shots that I uh, produced. Um, and it was a massive studio shoot, uh, dancing sort of shoot for two days. Uh, which went really well, and I also showed how you light the whole thing, or how I light the whole thing. Um, so check those out too if you're interested in how I do a more high-ended like lighting for a studio scenario, where we have a massive white backdrop, which is around 15 metres wide, uh, and probably um, 8 metres high. Uh, so check that out. Uh, it's it's really interesting if you if you want to get into that sort of shooting. I've had some people comment saying, wow, David, they didn't realise I was a real shooter, and it's quite funny. Um, because I do that all the time, but I don't share a lot of it because, you know, I can't sort of show some of the shoots uh, that I do due to the fact that the clients just don't want to share them. Uh, the dance studio was great because they allowed me to film that uh, and show an actual shoot. Uh, the audio was a little bit bad because I was on my iPhone. I just sort of shared it quickly. Uh, but it gives you an idea about how the shoots work. But if you have checked that um, dance studio one, that was only one shoot for over two days. Uh, we shot for two full days starting at nine in the morning and went till six at night. Um, so there were two massive days uh, and we do a few of those uh, and love doing them. Uh, so check those out as well uh, if you haven't looked. Um, what else have we got over here? Um, Cloudy and cold morning in Adelaide too. Yep, it's uh, cold, cold right down the south down here. Scissor man just retired today. Now I can spend more time with photography and videography. Wow, fantastic, Scissor man. Uh, that's really uh, great for you. Now you can uh, chill a little bit. You've obviously deserved that break. Rick said, except for the L Mount Alliance, what's the connection between Panasonic and... Uh, like, well, I'm not sure what their connection is uh, apart from that, but they must have some sort of working relationship um, because they are using those uh, the lenses that they're developing between them. And I'm pretty sure that the new um, Leica uh, announcement, the camera which I'll discuss later on, has the SH-1 sensor in it. Um, as well. So they, I think they're also sharing sensors now as well, which is interesting uh, uh, as well. Um, Leanna says, good day, good day, Leanna. Um, A7 III has dropped. I'm going to talk about that. Boy, that's a cheap camera at the moment now. Uh, I really would not be buying the A6600 now. I, I'd definitely be getting the um, A6 Shush Siri. Um, I'd be getting the um, 
A7 III over the A6 600. They're basically the same price now. Uh, the A7 III might be a fraction cheaper, which is nuts when you think about that. All right, guys, I'm going to pull over to the thing and we're going to start the show. Let me just bring up the Osler images. Let me clear that. G'day everyone, uh, welcome to our usual uh, Friday for me, <laughs> it's Thursday for Europe in the US, um, show for Sony Alpha rumours, news and all this sort of stuff. Um, but look, to be honest, there's not much uh, news in the Sony realm at the moment, but I'm going to talk about a couple of things. I'm going to bring up the Sigma. We'll talk about that release, the, the 2470. I'm also going to talk about, uh, I just got a donation too, thank you so much RL. Um, you could just go $4.99, uh, thanks as always, thank you so much. There's also something, I got a notification that there's stickers or something as well now. I don't even know what that means. Apparently people can buy stickers and then they can throw stickers on the, uh, on the live chat. I've got no idea what that means, but anyway, I got a notification about that. Um, but thank you, RL, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, so... We're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about uh, the A7 III price drop that's out and also uh, some interesting things about the A9 II as well. Uh, and then I've got some stuff where we're going to sort of discuss the Laker and also a Panasonic update, which are fantastic. Uh, so I thought I'd throw those in uh, just to make the show uh, sort of a bit more interesting, seeing that's fairly light on the Sony Alpha rumors side of things. Uh, but we have got some Sony news as well. So uh, that's really interesting as well. Um, oh, Kerry's just bringing me in a coffee. Isn't she lovely? Uh, so let's get started. Oh no, before we do that, I wanted to talk about an A9. Kerry's bringing in a coffee for me. She's so lovely. Pop over and say hi, Kerry. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> hi and bye. Bye, Kerry. Bye. Love you. <laughs> she just brought me out my coffee in my Sony mug. So it is a, a real coffee today. It's not the other coffee. Kerry's off work today. She has a RDO, which is uh, they have a roster day off uh, per fortnight. So she has one day off per fortnight. Um, so, yeah, I had an issue. I wanted to talk about this. And again, it's I'm going to put out a video. Uh, ben just said hi, Kerry. Oh, she's gone. Ben just said hi. Oh, everyone's, everyone's saying hi to you. Um, yeah, th uh, I'm going to put out a video about this when I, I find out exactly what's wrong. Uh, because when I did the dance shoot on the weekend, um, I had an interesting th thing happen with my Sony A9. Now, this is the second time that this has happened. Well, I'm not, I won't say it's the second time, but uh, this is the second time I've had a, a, an issue. I think it may be the card. I'm not sure. But... Um, what I did was I shot for the whole day and I ended up with, I think, on the Sunday, 1,400 images uh, on the camera. Now, I only know that because when I check, sometimes I'll just check on the back of the camera, uh, you know, I'll press the play button and it brings up the uh, count on the thing. Let me just see if it'll bring it up. Uh, yeah, I mean, it shows that I've got uh, 251 images uh, of 251 images. So you can sort of keep a check for how many images are on your um, on your phone. I'm just trying to see if I can get that back. Let me just see. So if you're looking at it, I'll just bring up one of these images. So, you know, if you're looking at it, you can sort of see, oh, is it going to expose? This is some from the dance shoot anyway, but uh, but you'll get your images up the top up here and it tells you the amount of images that you get from the day. Now, the interesting thing was that I um, noticed that it was 400, uh, I think it was 1400 images that I took on the Sunday. Um, and I thought, wow, that's that's more images than what I actually thought because the, the Sunday wasn't quite as big as the Saturday. So I thought, wow, that's that's quite a lot of images. Anyway, when I came home and I put the images into Lightroom, uh, I noticed down the bottom that it said there was only nine uh, 900 images. Uh, and I thought, that's weird. There's, 400, there's 500 images that are missing. And... Um, I thought, oh no, this is a disaster because this is a paid shoot. So I was using my Sony A9 uh, and I had a Sony, uh, the, the Sony uh, high-end uh, card in the fast slot and I had a, a, um, 
I can't remember what the card was in the second slot. It's the same as these. Let me just check what they are. Yeah, I think they were just SanDisk 128. So they're these that are in the... Is that going to... I've just got to get it off my face. I had these in the, um, in the second card slot. So the way that I work is I shoot raw into slot two and I shoot um, JPEG onto slot one. And I, f I find that's fine. I mean, my exposure is nearly always exact. And, and due to the fact that I was shooting in studio, uh, the exposure is spot on anyway. And so I just got another donation too. Uh, Travis uh, just gave me four, uh, $149.99 uh, $4, I said $149. Sorry, Travis, that would have given you a heart attack. Uh, hi, David. Thumbs up, folks. Thanks so much. So, yeah, so it was interesting. So when I put it into Lightroom, I noticed there was 500 images missing, and I thought, this is a disaster. Um, I've lost 500 images. Now, those, they can't be reshot because it's a massive organization to get all the dancers there, to get changed into their costumes, to do all different things like that. And I thought, here we go. I've lost 500 images. Uh, I have to now call the client up and tell them that I can't deliver all the images that they paid for. Well... Luckily, the second card slot had, I thought I'd just put it into the computer and see. So I said to Kerry when I did it, I thought, oh my God, I might just try the second card slot and see if they're on there. Well, they were. So the second card slot had 1,499 images, 1,500 images. Um, so it gained back the 500 images that for some reason are not on the slot uh, number one. So I thought, oh no, this is terrible. So anyway, at least I was saved. And this is why I'm saying to people, guys, for God's sake, if you are doing anything that is a paid shoot, whatever you do, do not use a one card slot camera. Now, I don't know yet at this stage whether it's the card that's at fault or whether it's my camera. So I've sent it off to Pro, uh, Sony Pro Support. Uh, I sent it two days ago. They messaged me yesterday to say they've got the camera and they're going to look at it. Um, so I'll let you know and I'll do a video about it when it's uh, fixed because at this stage I'm not sure whether it's the camera that's at fault or whether it's the card that it's fault. But this is the second time that Sony card, I've already had the Sony card replaced once for corruptions um, and this is the second time if it's a card problem that it's the Sony card that's had a failure. So it, it's a little bit of a worry but I'm hoping that it's just the card that's, that's at fault here. Uh, and it's not the camera. Anyway, I'll, I'll let you know soon. But I was only saved due to the fact that I had a second card in the camera that fixed it. Now, people always say yes, but uh, if you have one card slot uh, that you very rarely can get an error, like they very rarely do the error. But what if your camera does fail? What if that was my A9 that had an issue uh, and then I would no longer be able to have those images? So I've only been saved by having that dual card slot. So what Whatever you do, guys, and this is the second time this has happened to me. Another big dance shoot I did as well. I had that corruption and I was saved by the second uh, card slot. So please, whatever you do, um, people always say they never hear about this, but I can tell you it's happened to me twice. So whatever you do, if you are paid to do something, like if it's a wedding or whatever you're doing, whatever you do, do not you do a paid work with a one single card slot camera because I would have been screwed. I would have had to contact the client, say, I'm so sorry, I can't deliver that. Their parents would have been devastated and that would have been just a terrible. Uh, so yeah, it's just a warning and I'll talk about it more when I get some more info back from Sony uh, Alpha Pro support. I'm just seeing what people are saying in here too. Oh, Long Rider gave $5 as well. Thank you so much, Long Rider. Um, I'm just seeing what people are saying about these card slots, if anyone's saying anything about that. Uh, yet the camera for lawyers and doctors that want to, oh, you're talking about the Laker. Um, mad photographer said, the moral of the story is two slots, folks. Exactly, uh, like I said, you, I would never now, ever, shoot a paid job with one card slot, no way. Uh, Triple said, uh, are you sure the SD1 didn't start a new folder for the additional shots? Well, it did, because that's the interesting thing, and, and thanks for saying that, Triple Zero. Th this is what was strange. It did start a new folder, but there was nothing in the folder. That That's what's interesting about how that worked, because I did check that, because um, I think it does start multiple folders, 
but there was nothing in that folder, whereas on the JPEG uh, one, there was those files in that folder. So yes, uh, it did do that, but they weren't there. Um, what else have we got? Um, Mad Photographer said, uh, thank you, Long Rider, too, for that donation. Mad Photographer said, actually, the moral of the story is buy a Nikon. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I'm just seeing if anyone else is mentioning anything about this as well. Um, Nivak said, when I import from the A7R3 to the iPad Photos app and use the Photos app to delete some after import, I have to uh, rebuild the image database each time. Did you try that? No, I didn't try that. I could have tried that, but it's, it's gone now to Sony Pro Support, so I'll see what happens. Um, David, do you love me as much as I love you? <laughs> that mean? Um, Peter said, my A7R4 just did the same thing. Really? Well, that's interesting. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, well, I'll let you know, Peter, what happens when I hear back from uh, Sony Pro Support. Oh, Jason, thank you so much too. Uh, never had a failure, but never would use a single uh, card slot. Um, Gerald said, uh, listen to David, the ESR has a single card slot. I would not go there plus poor performance. Yeah, I, I'd never, ever using a pay uh, shot, a single card slot ever again. I mean, now, like I said, twice, I've been saved by the second card slot, twice. Now, I shoot a lot, though. Uh, I mean, I do shoot an awful lot. I mean, I'm always doing paid shoots, but that's two times I would have been screwed and had to tell the client uh, there was a, an issue. Now, the thing was, too, and I probably should have clicked about this the other day because uh, what happened was I was shooting video on a wedding, and... Um, I noticed that occasionally in the card, there was a corrupt video file every so often, but randomly uh, through the photos. And again, that was that same card in, in card slot one. Now, I, 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 for some reason, I just thought, oh, it's just something that's happened. And it might have been because I was using a gimbal and I hadn't switched the power on or off or whatever. So I, I, I thought everything was okay. But then obviously, when I used the camera again on the weekend, I had this issue. I should have clicked early on that there was something wrong. So it seems to be that it was randomly happening at that point because I had occasionally through spots through the video, uh, corruptions through the video. And it will just say on the back of the screen, when I go to press play, it says uh, image preview not available. So that's what it's saying on the back of the actual screen. Um, so there's something seriously wrong somewhere. Uh, so I will let you know uh, what happened about that. Um, software issue maybe, Peter. Um, Rick said, uh, couldn't it be you accidentally touched the erase? No, 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 I didn't touch the erase button, Rick. Um, because like I said, the corruption too was on the video. Plus, um, if you press the erase button, it wouldn't be there on the JPEGs. Like, I, I, don't, I think they'd both go. Uh, but no, I didn't touch the erase button. And there's no way I'd touch the erase button for, uh, for, for 400, 500 images. Uh, no, that wouldn't make sense. Um, I just, just want to add to this before we go through to other stuff. Uh, Luckily, I was able to recover it two times. Okay, so you've had that issue three times on the A7S III. Um, you can't batch delete. Yeah, that's the thing. It, it, like I said, it was 500 images that were missing. Um, Studio says, was uh, your first card... The, yes, it was. It was the same card. So my first card was that 128 gigabyte card. Uh, it was the same card. It's the Sony 300 megabits per second one. Um, it if it was just 64 gig, the camera saving just to one second card slot, if the first, no, it wasn't full. There was still plenty of room left on the card. Um, where is the A7S III, David? Yeah, I know. Uh, Nikon Z cameras have a single card slot, mad photography. Yep, that's, I mean, I certainly, there's no way I would ever now shoot with a one card slot. Uh, never, because I've been saved twice. Um, Brandon says, uh, I was trying out new Sony gear at the event and switched cards into multiple cameras, lost images uh, that had shot overriding the same names, recovered JPEGs, so always shoot raw JPEG. Yeah, that's that's what I would do. That's why I always shoot raw plus JPEG. Um, Sam said, I've had three card failures since having my A7 III, different cards, two slots save me each time. It may be rare, but it doesn't mean that it can never happen, and, and, and that's exactly right. Like, I keep hearing people say it never happens, but I can tell you it does, because it's happened to me twice, uh, and I've been saved both times with dual card slots. Um, 
Sal said, that has happened to me. I got two new cards, and it did the same thing again two months later. Um, see, it's amazing how many people are having problems, you see. So it's, it's, it is more common than what people think. Um, I'm just trying to see if there's anything else. Langston said, which means now it's doomed to happen. Um, never had this issues with Sony. I always use two cards, save one raw, one to JPEG. Um, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't you shoot raw plus JPEG to each card. Um, I always shoot raw plus JPEG because I find uh, the JPEGs are good enough in case of an emergency. I always expose close enough that it's not a problem. Um, try using recovery software on the card to see if your images come up. I could have tried that, and I'm sure that's probably what Sony Pro Support will do. Uh, they'll get back to me, and they'll they'll certainly check what the problem was, and I'll find out, and I'll let you know. I'll do a video about it, and I'll let you know what the outcome is, guys. Uh, Ralph said, finally made a live show. Good to see you here. Um, Rick said, I have the A7 III, so this is scary. I usually do video on one card and still images on the other. Uh, yeah, and, th and that was the thing too, that when I did the, the wedding recently, I didn't do a backup, and this is where I was stupid, because I, I really should change the settings and have done backup from video to the second card as well, uh, because then I would have recovered those files, I think, that were having issues that were corrupt through the card. Uh, so I've learnt my lesson there. I'll never ever do that again. I'm, I'm also going to back up video. If I'm shooting video, I'll just do video backup to one card to the other. Um, Gerald says, I remember you had an issue with your first Sony card long ago. Yeah, that, uh, that's right, Gerald. So this is this could be the second one. If it is an issue, I'm going to give the Sony cards up and go to, back to the um, SanDisk. Um, the Sony ST recovery tool has saved my bacon once. Uh, were, both, were both cards recording RAW plus JPEG? No, only, no. Uh, single, um, Raymond. So I, I record singly uh, RAW to card slot one, JPEG to card slot two. Um, if you shoot tethered, uh, does it matter how many card slots you have? Uh, no, I don't think it does, uh, Delta Dave. Um, that's it. Okay, all right, so let's get started anyway on the show because I, I just wanted to bring that up and, and mention to you about be very careful, guys. Always make sure you've got a backup solution whenever you're shooting, particularly for a paid shoot or something that can't be reshot. All right, so let's go to the first story. So let me just put in here, um, 27, uh, 27, 30. All right, so first story of today, uh, we're going to be looking at um, the Sigma uh, lens. I noticed, now Sigma have announced, it's fully announced now, the 24-70mm lens, uh, the 2.8 DN Art uh, series is coming to E-mount, uh, and it looks like an amazing lens. The, the only thing I think that I've noticed is that uh, you don't have, it has a lock switch, I believe it does have that, but that's about as far as it goes uh, on the lens itself. You don't have any of um, the AF uh, manual focus buttons, I don't think, I couldn't find it anyway, it just seems to have a lock switch. Uh, and you don't have the Sony uh, extra buttons that you can uh, program to IAF and things like that. Um, but they have announced this new lens, um, and I'll show you a couple of different uh, photos so you can see it. Um, I think it had it here, uh, where was it? Oh yeah, it was those that I sort of put you through there. Uh, beautifully made again, like everything uh, that uh, Sigma make are uh, really nice lens, built like tanks. Uh, although I think the weight is similar to the 24-7 GM. It might even be a fraction uh, lighter. Someone in the live chat, if you do know the weight of the GM, the 24-70, I'd love you to just post it so that I can know what it is. Because this one, I believe, is uh, going to weigh about, well, they're, say, they're saying 835 uh, grams or 1.8 pounds. It does use 82 millimeter filters, so it is reasonably big. Um, uh, oh, and they say with an E-mount version coming a few grams lighter, so it's going to be a fraction lighter than what they're saying there, so it's going to be a little bit lighter than that. So it looks like, again, it's, it's going to be an amazing lens. Uh, they're saying the key features, best uh, in-class optical performance, and I wouldn't be surprised to see this 
beat the G Master in terms of, um, well, sharpness and chromatic aberration and things like that. Uh, it, I've used uh, a few of their zoom lenses and they are really amazing lenses. Um, so Gerald's just saying, you're wrong. Oh, it does have an AFMF switch, does it, Gerald? Oh, thanks. Uh, uh, and it says the Sigma is 80, 835 grams. Uh, Sony is 865. Wow, interesting. Thanks for that, Gerald. So it's it, it does have the uh, AFMF button, and I think it also has a, a lock holder button as well. So the only thing it looks like it's missing, Gerald, uh, and everyone, is the uh, programmable switch, which is not too bad, really. Um, so they're saying here, best in class optical performance. I think it will be uh, amazing. Uh, contrast, sharpness, and everything you would expect being a Sigma art lens is going to be a beautiful. Uh, ensuring compatibility with the latest full frame camera bodies um, as well. Flexibility for various uses and photographic environments. It's dust splash proof body and lock mechanism. They really are built like a tank. I mean, they really are. It says it has a zoom lock switch, lens hood with a lock. Um, dust a mount with dust and splash proof structure um, compatible with lens uh, aberration correction available mount conversion service um, designed to minimize flare and ghosting uh, uh, evaluation with Sigma zone MTF measuring system uh, so it's got an 11 blade uh, round diaphragm um, and it's a high precision rugged brass uh, bayonet mount made in Japan and it's craftsman switch so it doesn't mention that um, a, uh, the manual focus switch, Gerald, which is why I thought it didn't have it. So you, you said you have, so you must have uh, more information than what I've got. Uh, 24-70, obviously. Uh, it goes from f2.8 to f22, uh, and it's got 11 uh, blades uh, as well in the diaphragm. 19 elements, and it's got 15 groups. Um, what else can we sort of talk about on here? Uh, focus method is internal. Um, does it have how close it will focus? I don't think it does. The weight, yeah, the weight there is 835 grams. Uh, Gerald was saying it's 835 there, so that matches that. Diameter is 88 millimeters. The length is 123. It's a magnesium alloy um, as well. But it looks it looks really good. And I mean, I, I did read this and it looks by the MTF charts and I'll put these down below so you can have a look. Uh, but it looks like the MTF charts of this lens is v are very, very good. And I would expect that uh, to have as well. So, you know, it really is amazing. Uh, like I said, the Sig every Sigma lens I've used has been outstanding. So I think the days where you had to buy a GM lens really are over. And this is really interesting because now we've got the 2470. You can almost bet they'll do like a 14, uh, uh, sorry, a, a 70 to 200 uh, and other lenses as well now. So it, it's it's amazing. I mean, I, like I've said to you, I think from the Sony side of things, uh, we really are blessed now. Uh, and I think the price, I was looking at a few people guessing on prices of this, but um, I think you'll probably find I'm guessing about $1,500 is what you'd see this price at, and that's still way under what you pay for the GM. Um, great. I still, on a personal uh, side of this, I still wouldn't get rid of my Tamron uh, because I just love the weight. I think there's a, a thing here as well. Uh, it shows the, the different sizes that you'll get uh, from this. You've got the GM there. You can see how... Uh, small this actually is it's really surprised me how they've made this smaller than the GM yeah I don't know why they've put the lens hood on there if you look at the lens uh, barrel itself you can see there's a, a big difference between the two there and then you can see the size of the Tamron lens as well I think I'll, uh, there you, uh, gives you an idea if you want to see the you know your size of your Tamron lens so it's going to be about the same size as what this is uh, so it's quite a bit smaller than what um, the GM is, which is interesting. Um, I, like I said, personally, I'm gonna stick with my Tamron 28 to 75. Uh, I've got the 24 GM anyway, so if I need to go wider than that 28, I can stick the, the uh, GM 24 on there. Um, I love the weight, particularly of the Tamron and the size. It's a 67 millimeter filter thread. All the NDs that I've got, uh, uh, have the um, 
67 mil. So, you know, if I want to put it on a gimbal, uh, if I want to transfer everything between everything, I love it. I love the weight of the Tamron, uh, and I also love the quality. I, I think probably, and I'm look, I'm guessing, because it's not released yet, but I'm guessing that the Sigma probably will be the best of the bunch. Uh, if you're dealing with how modern it is, uh, it's a newer lens that's come out. I would expect it to focus very, very well. I've found all the Sigma lenses that I've used uh, have been excellent in the autofocus. Um, I suppose it's just missing, you know, you're missing that programmable button that you get on the GM lenses. Uh, so that's really all that's probably missing. Uh, and you're going to save a, a you know, a, a fair amount of money, which means you'd have enough money to buy another lens if you wanted to. Um, I, I think it's it's really a great release, and I'm excited. I'm excited for Sony users that if you do want to, uh, you know, that that typical 2470. Like I said, I've got the Tamron, but that's 2875. Some people do want 2470. Um, so if you do want that 2470, the Art series lenses, I can't recommend enough. Uh, so fantastic uh, overall, Ted. Uh, does the 2470 have stabilization? Well, I haven't been able to find it uh, mentioned anywhere. Uh, I, th I would think it would, but if someone else would know um, anywhere, they can let me know, because I haven't been able to find that in any of the specs where it mentions stabilization. It might not, um, because no one has mentioned that, I don't think. Uh, wasn't mentioned down here, was it? Yeah, it doesn't mention it, so perhaps it hasn't. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It hasn't been mentioned. All right, let's go over to the chat anyway, because I want to see what people are saying about this before we move on to the next story. Oh, Gerald's saying that it has the programmable uh, focus lock button, same as the GM lenses and the MF, and my dealer confirmed this. Well, thanks, Gerald. Um, well, you've told me a lot that, that they're not saying actually uh, over on the um, specifications. Uh, both are heavier after eight hours of hiking. <laughs> um, Jamie said, miss the notification, damn it. Yeah, I know it's, it's bad. Like I said, it, it really, it's... The notification's shocking. That's why, guys, if you can give me a thumbs up, I do appreciate it. Jim said, thumbs up, 140 viewers. How many uh, have not given their thumbs up or thumbs down? Um, oh, we got one thumbs down. I love it. Uh, Jason said, I believe the Sigma is smaller and lighter than the GM one would probably have better IQ. I think it probably will have better IQ as well. Uh, let's hope it focuses fast. I would think it does. All, like I said, all the lenses that I've used from Sigma have been excellent in the autofocus department. So, um, what else have we got? Does it have image stabilization? Well, that's what I can't find. Um, so I'm not sure. Um, Kevin said, that Sigma sounds intriguing, uh, but just a little late. I'm in love with my Tammy. So am I, Kevin. I love that uh, Tamron. I, I really do. Um, no, the, uh, no EOS stabilizer. So I think it may not have IBIS, but your Sony body has IBIS. Exactly. Uh, as long as you do take into account, remember, you do have your uh, internal IBIS on your Sony cameras. Uh, as long as you take your shutter speed into account, it, it's not really an issue. Uh, it's only an issue if you haven't got any lens stabil any stabilization at all. Like my A6400 doesn't have any. Uh, that's why I love that camera so much on a gimbal because the gimbal does that for it. Uh, but your stabilization is in your uh, camera, so you know as long as you don't go ridiculous in the shutter speed, you'd be fine. Um, Sony should reissue the 2470 GM with less weight and a smaller profile. Like I said, I've discussed that many times. I do think that Sony will produce another 2470 um, and a 70 to 200. Those lenses will be due for an update to a version two. It's only a matter of time. Nikon do it, Canon do it, Sigma do it. Uh, you're going to find that they will do a version two of those lenses, which will be much better uh, than the previous lenses. I'm not saying those lenses are bad, but they will give you better focusing. They'll probably put the linear focusing motors in there, uh, and they will probably improve the quality a little bit too. 
Uh, I prefer shooting telephoto, so the Tamron 28 to 75 works out for me anyway. I love that too, and I, you know what? And I think it's interesting because it gives it a much better portrait look. And I use that at the dance shoot that I did on the weekend. Being able to go to 75 mil on the Tamron really is is amazing because uh, the extra five mil uh, does give you a fraction more of that more portrait type look as well. So that can be an advantage. Yes, you lose out on the wide end a little bit, but you do gain on that longer end a little bit. Um, Gerald says, I have the Tamron 17 to 28 and I love it, but I may get the Sigma R 2470 2.8. I love that AF uh, MF switch and the programmable focus hole buttons. Uh, Jamie said, I would not be surprised if, if there was an updated GM lens coming from Sony. I would think so too. Uh, guy with the camera said, good times ahead, for sure. Like I said, we have so many options now on Sony. It's amazing. Um, uh, Shiku said, Gerald Williams, were you using SD cards all 40 years, uh, for all 40 years? Yeah, yeah, but you know, I hear that a lot. But the, the problem is when you were dealing with film, that's all you had. You had no option. You couldn't put a camera with two rolls of film in it. And I have had issues. Uh, I've done shoots before where there's been a problem. Um, I did one, I mean, I shouldn't say it. I did one shoot years and years. And luckily, it wasn't a paid shoot. It was for me. Uh, I did one shoot and I forgot to put the film in the camera. <laughs> <laughs> and I finished the shoot and I took out, I went to take out the film and there was no film in it. Um, look, it's it's like cars never used to have seatbelts, but now they do have seatbelts and you put them on. Uh, if you've got a, a, the choice to have something that has redundancy, you really should have a camera that has redundancy than have one that hasn't got redundancy. You owe it to your clients. You Like what would have happened if I had a single card slot camera I would have lost that shoot. I would have lost money. I would have lost my reputation with that client because you know that they wouldn't care that the camera had a corruption. All they'd care about is that they couldn't get their images. So I would have had my reputation damaged. Uh, I would have, and like I said, I would have lost lots of money. Um, and I've only been saved because I had a camera that had dual card slots. I, I think that has to be uh, considered. Um, Josh said, I've heard that it does not have ISIS. Yeah, IBIS, yeah, I don't think it will. Um, Gerald said, it has the programmable focus hole button. You keep saying it doesn't, no lens stabilization. Um, Jamie, no, I've, I've said it has got that, Gerald. I said it has uh, got that now, the focus hole button. Uh, I said it just doesn't talk about that anywhere. Uh, Jamie said, overall, I think the addition of the Sigma option of the 24-7-ish range uh, rounds your purchasing options out well. GM for the high end, Tamron for the lower end, and Sigma for the uh, mid-range uh, end. I think the quality, though, the interesting thing there, though, Jamie, is when you're saying high end, mid-range, I think the quality is pretty on par between all of them. Uh, that Tamron in the center is as sharp as any lens I've ever used. It, it is incredibly sharp. Yes, the edges may be a little bit less sharp, but I don't, I don't care about the edges. It, really, that doesn't bother me at all. But in the center, it's sharp. I would think that if you're talking about quality-wise, I wouldn't be surprised that the Sigma uh, out-resolves the GM. Um, but we have to wait and see. Um... If it has stabilization for the name, it will be OS in it. Yeah, I don't think it does. Um, DP, oh, DP review, review says no stabilization. Yep, thanks. Uh, Gerald says, David Osa, go to the BNH site for the lens. They say it all. Thanks, Gerald. Uh, trust you. Uh, Ralph said, there is no, there is a more detailed spec sheet on the Sigma site. It will have AFMF switch and the AEL button. Thanks, guys. Um, no uh, image stabilization. Will Sony do any E-mount sign lenses? Well, you never know. I mean, I'd love them to do that. They may not, though, because they're only manual focus. Uh, you can use any uh, sign lens that's out there, so I'd probably not. Um, Sony uh, F uh, FEC 16-35 to T 3.1G. That would be an interesting lens. Uh, I would love the Sigma. The added weight and filter size prevents me, um, and that can be an issue. Like I said, I do like using the lighter lenses now, like the Tamron. But again, I, have, I love the 135 GM, and that's not light. But I don't have that on the camera all the time. That's the difference. I, I can walk around all day with the Tamron 28-75 to on it, and... I don't get tired, uh, you know, and that, that is amazing to do that. 
Um, all of your thumb is stabilized. Give a thumbs up. <laughs> Jim. Uh, Jason said Sony's greatest strength now is their open mount. Exactly. Any lens designer can make a lens for the E-mount, and I'm pretty sure uh, everyone else mount is closed. Uh, and that is a really good point. The other thing too is that it's been a great idea how Sony have matched the um, APS-C mount with a full frame mount. It means you can uh, use lenses from both mounts. Uh, the, the problem with the Nikon is you can't do that. You can't do that with a Canon unless you use adapters and things like that. Um, Sony did a fantastic thing where your APS-C lens can be used on the full frame or your full frame can be used on the APS-C lens. So they're not having to redesign or use R&D to, de to develop two mounts. Uh, and that's fantastic. I think that was a great idea and I hope that's never changed because I, I think that's brilliant being able to do that. Um... Sorry, I meant quality and build features. Oh, okay, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Um, would you, would you uh, ever go back to the Sigma 105 1.4 now that, yes, I would, I love that lens. Uh, I still think that the Sigma 105 is the sharpest lens I've used. Um, that was nuts. I mean, the, the, Sigma, the, C, the Sony 135 is beautiful, it's stunning, it's sharp, focus is amazing, I love the rendering. But if you're talking about pure sharpness for separation, when I've used them all now, uh, I think the 105 1.4 was probably the sharpest lens that I've ever used. But it's it's massive. That that's the issue with that lens. The other advantage of 105 is you can use it in a lot tighter space. But um, that lens was outstanding. I, I have to say that the Sigma 105 was one of the best lenses I've ever used. Uh, there's two lenses that I can say. My favorite lens is still this, the uh, Sony 135. I just love that focal length. But there's two lenses, if I had to say, that were the sharpest and the nicest to use if you're looking at rendering and everything else. Uh, the Sigma 105 1.4 was one of them. The next lens that I think was the best 35 that I've ever used by far, uh, it beats anything I've ever used in that focal range, was the Tamron uh, 35 uh, 1.4, their, their new lens that they've brought out that um, I tested on the Nikon mount that I did. Uh, that lens was unbelievable. I have reviewed it. If you go back, you'll be able to find that. Uh, I, I so hope Tamron bring that out for the Sony mount uh, because that would blow away any other lens that was out there for the 35mm for Sony particularly. And I'm sure they probably will. But that... Uh, well, they, well, Tamron said that that 35 was the best lens that they'd ever produced, and I, I can, I would fully back that up from when I used that lens. It was, it was outstanding. It was brilliant. Great build quality, um, excellent focus. Um, it, it was superb. It really was superb. Um, and the second, like my favorite Sony lenses, would be the. Um, Obviously, I love the Tamron lens, the 28 to 75, but my, my favorite Sony native lenses are the 135 uh, 1.8 and the 24 1.4. I love that lens as well. Uh, they're both brilliant lenses too. Uh, let's have a look. I'm just seeing what other people are saying here. Any help with video recording on the A7R 3 I have problems with stuttering while panning. Uh, yeah, look, that probably is your shutter speed uh, feature. What shutter speed were you using on that? Um, it, it's often better to shoot 24p if you're doing that. But the, the, the problem is too, if you pan too fast, you can get that stuttering uh, that can happen. Sometimes if you're going to pan too fast, I've found that I get better results shooting um, with uh, 60p instead of 24p. Uh, and it's a little bit smoother because you've got more frames that are actually being put in. Um, but it's more technique too, so uh, let me know what shutter speed you were using. Um, Rick said the old Sigma 2470 2.8 lens for Canon and Nikon was 1100 Hope the new one is about the same price for Sony E-mount. Um, Jason said oh, well, it will be more expensive. I think it will be 1500 but that's what I'm guessing it uh, is going to be. Would you recommend the Tamron 28 for the A6 600? Y yes, I would. As long as you understand that you're going to get roughly, what, a, a 35 mil or 40 mil, I can't remember the conversion, uh, you've got to take the conversion into that, but you do get a longer lens, which is great if you want that longer lens. I use uh, my Tamron lens on the A6400 all the time and love it. Um, 
The A-mount lenses were both full frame and crop. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, true. Would you reckon? Oh, and I've already done that. All right, so that's that one. So let's go up to this A92 uh, in stock thing because I want to discuss that with you. Um, 49. 40. Because this is interesting, and I'm in a way I'm, I'm sort of not surprised that, and I did just check, uh, that the A92 um, is now in stock. And it's in stock at Amazon. It's also in stock uh, at Adorama and Focus Camera. I didn't check those two. I just checked Amazon. Uh, so it is actually, just let me show Gerald Williams. Gerald has said, his dealer says it's going to be $12.99 uh, to $14.99 for the Sigma. Thanks, Gerald. Um, so it is $4,498, but it's unusual for a camera to be in stock right from the beginning like that. And in a way, it doesn't surprise me. And the reason why I'm saying this is that um, I don't think it's such a big game changer, the, the A92 over the A9. I mean, you, you still can't get the A7R4. Uh, it's still on back order now here. Um, so it, that shows you sort of how popular that camera is. Now, yes, there's a difference in price too that could be um, that could, could be uh, part of the issue there. But I think because the, the I know there's there is a number of differences. I think there's something like 50 differences if you count them up. But but I don't care what anyone says. I still think the A92 is an incremental upgrade. It should have been called the A9. 1.5 or something. Uh, it's not a massive upgrade if you're talking about features. It's got the same sensor. It's got the same uh, frames per second, uh, probably the same focusing. I mean, I'll let you know. I'm getting one on the 16th of December uh, for a couple of weeks, so I'll let you know when I test it against my A9. But I, I think it it's something that I personally would not buy. I'll probably wait for an A9 III or something. The more and more I think about it, I think the better option here, unless you're a sports shooter and you really need those networking features, and how many sports shooters are there, uh, you know, I mean, I mean they're, they're, there's probably not that many that shoot professional sports um, as compared to the average shooter, say the wedding photographers out there, the event shooters, portrait photographers. Um, I still think that the A9, the A9, original A9 is the one to get. Because the money that you're saving with the original A9, you could then go out and buy one of uh, or two of these amazing lenses that are out there. Um, so I think looking at the incremental upgrade, and I think this is shown in the fact that, that you can buy these cameras now, they're in stock. I don't know if it's in stock in B&H, uh, but for them to be in stock so soon after they've been released and you can just go and buy it, shows that the market is not out there for this camera. I think you would probably find that people are buying the A9 instead of the A92. And, and I would recommend, uh, I'm talking from my perspective, guys, because I'm not a sports shooter. I would recommend if you're a, a wedding photographer, if you're an event photographer, or even a portrait photographer, that wants that 24 megapixel file size, I would recommend to get the A92, uh, the A9 any day over the A92. Uh, I'm not bagging the A92, I just don't think there's enough features in that to warrant an upgrade or for the money difference between the two. I think that the A9 is a brilliant camera for its price um, and I probably would buy that over the A92 now even if I was buying another camera today. I think if I probably had the money and I, I was out, out for a camera of that range, uh, I would be buying the A9, not the A92 now. Uh, so that just sort of shows where it is from my perspective. Uh, I think that I will probably s wait for, I was originally thinking I may get this late next year uh, or something like that. But I think now I may wait for the next version to come out before I do that. If my A9 uh, breaks or something like that, something happens to it, I think I'll buy just another A9 to replace it. We were so lucky with what Sony gave us. The firmware version 6 basically made that like a new camera. And I think I'm surprised Sony gave us that so close to releasing the A9 too. Because that did make it such not such a big difference between the two. Um, I know there's a bigger body. If that's important to you, well then the A9 is good. Uh, I'm fine with the A9 original body. 
Um, I know there's the two faster dual card slots. I never have an issue with that anyway. My card slots are both fast enough to keep up with what I need to do. It's the same uh, LCD screen in the back, uh, which is a pity, but it is the same screen in the back, same EVF, uh, same sensor, so I'd probably recommend just to get the A9, uh, but that's what I'm saying. All right, so let's go to the next story. We're 54. 5442. I'd love to know your thinking in the chats too, guys, down below. If you're not watching this live, what you think about what I've just said about the A9. Uh, just be curious to know what you think about that. Um, this is interesting, though, because we're starting to see for the first time price drops uh, with the A7 III. Uh, and it's at the moment uh, $200 off. But I've also seen a number of places where they're saying that uh, they're giving extras with it as well, like there's memory cards and other things that are um, released as well with the camera. But this is why I think the A7IV is coming. Um, and you know what? I wouldn't even be surprised. I discussed this last week. I wouldn't even be surprised if uh, we don't get an A7S III and the A7IV is it. I mean, I know that a lot of people are saying we probably will still get two different cameras. I'm not 100% sure now which way Sony is going to go. And I wouldn't be surprised if the a7 IV, remember, and the only reason why I'm saying this is because when the a7 III got released, uh, that blew everything out of the water. And it really was so far ahead of anything at the time for that range of camera. So if they do do the same thing with an a7 IV, this could be the camera that has 4K60 in it, and it might be, say, a 38 megapixel sensor, or, you know, it could even be the 42, we don't know, but it'll probably be much higher. It may be a sort of dumbed-down version of the A7R4 with better video specs in it. I mean, that could be what it is. But now we're starting to see price drops on the A7 III. I'm just wondering whether the A7R4, sorry, the A7 IV, is just around the corner. And when I say just around the corner, obviously we're talking now about the start of next year. Um, but I probably wouldn't be surprised if that's the next camera announced. Um, Sony just seemed to be holding more and more off with the A7S uh, camera bodies. We, I mean, we're not even hearing rumors or anything about that now. Uh, so I'm not sure what's going on in that regard. They must be either having real problems or they want to protect their um, uh, high-end line, which is the FS7 and cameras like that. So there's two options. They're having problems with the uh, uh, the heating, uh, or there's uh, they, they're just not going to give it to us. Uh, and that's something we just have to wait and see, uh, which I think would be a big mistake. But I do think we may, we may see the A7 IV next, though. That could be the next camera that's announced, and that may be interesting to see what's in that. Uh, you know, if, if it's sort of like this dumbed-down version of the A7R4, we'll probably get the A9 tracking in. I think all the new cameras now will get that in. Um, I, I mean, it's never as good as the A9, but it's getting close. Uh, you'll get the better tracking. You'll probably get the newer body uh, and things like that, the new ergonomics. And hopefully, uh, we'll get a better uh, screen at the back, which is what we all, we're all waiting for because, boy, Sony, it's four years old technology, same as their video is four years old as well. It's about time that Sony up those uh, for starters, that's for sure. Uh, I'm going to keep going because then I'll come back to... I'll, I'll just quickly go to the chat just to see what's happening there. Um... Yeah, Mick said it says no stabilization. Yeah, thanks, Mick. Um, Future says, I've tried both 4K30 and 4K25, had to switch between PAL and NTSC to switch frames per second, yep. I've tried shooting double shutter speed, um, 25, 150th, even 1, 100th, and 4K30 with the shutter at 60, and 120, no dice. Oh, okay, interesting. It might be a technique then. You do have to, if you are panning, you do have to pan very, very slow. Like, like if you do pan too fast, there will be a stepping that you see uh, in your video. I've sort of worked that out now that when I'm starting to pan, I'll do it very, very slow and as smooth as possible. Uh, and that eliminates that sort of stepping that you'll see in that pan. It, it's probably just your technique, I would say, that's causing you to get that stepping that's in there. Uh, you just need to keep practicing and slow down those pans. Um... When will we announce the A7 IV? Well, I'm, I'll, well, like I said, I'm predicting early next year. Um, 
Ripley said, some reviews are saying they've done some improvements on the A9 sensor in respect of focusing. Yet, yeah, look, they may, but I, I just don't think, Ripley, that you, it's probably going to be enough. When you say that, I never, ever think of using my A9 and think, wow, I'd like the focus to be better. Uh, and this is the thing that I'm trying to say to people, that reviewers may be saying this, yes. I'll let you know when I review it in, in December. Uh, I'm getting it December the 16th. But I... I I can't see f how it could be better for what I do. Now, remember, I'm not a bird shooter. I'm not shooting birds flying through the air. I'm not shooting sports. So for me, if you're doing that, well, then the A92 may be a, a slight, maybe a slightly better option for you. But for what I shoot, I've never looked at my, even the A7 III, to be honest, I've never even looked at that as saying, wow, I wish it would focus better or give me more images in focus. Um, so I don't know about that. Look, as a normal user of, of using these cameras, I, I've never thought that they need to be better. Um, Sony didn't register any new camera code, so it's unlikely we'll get the A7 II. But, uh, but John, sometimes Sony announce them and then they're announced a few days later. So don't get too um, caught up on that. Uh, if you go back and check uh, Sony... Uh, alpha rumors site often they'll announce the code number and then a week or two later the camera can be announced um, Gerald said it doesn't beat it with price or EVF shooting it has better are oh, you talking about the 1DX yeah um, he was talking to someone else I think Sony is preemptively dropping prices before the Nikon fire sale interesting Dave Rick said, the Sony cameras are so advanced, I can't imagine what else I need for humble wedding shooters. Exactly, Rick. Like I said to you, that's why I would recommend the A9 so much to everyone. That has dropped so much in money compared to when you first purchased it. You've got the version 6 firmware in it now, the tracking, you've got the animal IAF that's in that now. That camera now is unbelievable. And for the price that you're, they're asking for it, that is such a bargain compared to buying the A92, unless you need those features that are in the A92. I don't. Um, we don't need the A7S series anymore. Maybe. And that may be what's going on. I'm not sure. Stephen said, uh, re A92 and A7R um, V. I actually wanted to buy one last weekend and did not get any of them. A9 is, in, uh, is too sports focus and not enough pixels and the a7 um four uh, r4 uh, is uh too much pixel so sadly i'm still torn yeah it's hard if you do want a camera that's in between that uh stephen what about the a7 r3 though i mean you, you that's 48 megapixels that's much more manageable if you don't want to go up to 60 megapixels or perhaps wait a little bit longer and it, you may get the a7 IV uh, that could have 36 megapixels. Um, Jim said, uh, you can probably buy your A7 for, uh, yeah, for a WPPI. You never know, Jim. Um, I'm new here wondering what you shoot. Uh, I shoot the Sony A9 and the Sony A7 III Kia. They're the two cameras, and I also have the A6400. Um would the A7 III justify cost, uh, just, A7 III justify twice the cost of the A6400? Currently own the A6300. I do wildlife uh, food portraits. Um, yes, I think it does. I, I mean, I, I still think the A7 III is a way better camera. Uh, just remember, the A7 III now is basically, with that price reduction, is basically the same price as an A6600. Um, so unless you need that crop, you know, you want that extra reach. Uh, I think the A7 III is definitely worth it. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, you've also got IBIS in the camera as well, don't forget, uh, which is a big thing as well if you want the IBIS in there. Uh, you've got full frame as well. Uh, so I do think it's worth it. Josh said, what about the A7R III? Yeah, that's what I was saying as well. Um Gerald says, I have the A9 and the A7R4. Uh, Both of them are unique and special in their own areas. Maybe an A7R3 is what you need. Great prices in that now. And that's exactly right. They are. The A7R3 and the A9 at the moment are great buys uh, if you're dealing with what that camera can do. 
Uh, so unless you need the features of the A7R4, you know, unless you need the megapixels that are there, uh, you can get the A7R3. Uh, um, guy with the camera said, I need picture profiles on the A9. Only thing I need, faster 60 frame, 60p, yeah, I wish I had that too, is nice, but give me the basics. I'm okay with the picture profiles. I mean, I do wish it had it, just in case if I did want it, but I always only shoot the standard profile. So for me, it's that's not a big deal but it certainly would be if you're a videographer and you like to use you know some of the log or hlg profiles that's for sure i don't know why they don't put that in there um or the a6400 uh, could hold me until i go uh, for an a9 skipping the a73 that could be a really good option too uh, if you wanted to go that way as well um uh, A7R3 is 15% back, uh, back on Amazon now with Prime Card. See, the A7R3 is amazing value at the moment, guys. It really is. It's, it's incredible value. 6 to 7K budget and no rush to buy. Get the A7 III or hold out for an A7S, A7 IV and increase the budget a bit for accessories and lenses. If you're in no hurry, I would wait. Just because, look, we're close to Christmas anyway. Uh, I'd probably wait until the first uh, couple of months in the new year just to see what's announced. Uh, that's that's what I would recommend. If you want to jump in now uh, and you've got six to seven uh, k, are um, uh, you you you're obviously in video though? Yeah, I'd wait. I would be waiting. Uh, maybe the price drop is because of the A7R4. Uh, um, maybe. Um, what about the A7 II for 1K? I know you're losing 4K, uh, but it's still a good camera. Um, yeah, I wouldn't, look, if it was me, I wouldn't buy the A7 II. There's massive difference in focusing uh, and low light focusing, particularly with the A7 II as against the newer cameras. Uh, if I was looking at that, I'd buy something like an A6400 in place of the A7 II. Um, I would try and save up a fraction more and get an A7 III. But if you only had enough money uh, for that, I'd probably try and save and get something like an A6300, a much better camera, much better camera than the A7 II. Um, he wants the A7R with 32. Yeah, I can understand that. But I've, I've got a feeling that the A7, um, the A7 IV will probably give us that 36 megapixel or around that. Uh, I have an A7R2 viewfinder has deteriorated grainy. What would be a step up uh, to cure those woes? I have the A7 III now and the A7S II. Uh, A7R3 probably would be a, a good one, or the A9 uh, would be a great upgrade if you're dealing with that, Chris. Um, but if you want the file size, a, a good step up would be the A7R3. Um, I'm impressed with the people that have patience. I wouldn't be able to wait. <laughs> All right, let's go into the next story. We're going to look at the Laker. What time are we on? 107. Because, boy, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, this new camera from Laker, if I had the money, um, I would buy it. I really would buy it. This camera is beautiful. Uh, and I have to admit, look at, what is it? I think it's nearly 6,000 US. But for Leica, that actually is a really good price range. Um, I'm surprised that it came in under, uh, for around that money. Um, this is a stunning design. I'll, I'll just show you the design to start with, and then we'll look, we'll talk about the specs uh, that are on it, but it, it's beautiful. I mean, the uh, one issue is it is a fixed screen though, so you haven't got the ability to fold that out at all. I don't know why they haven't given that, maybe because they want it very robust, I'm not really sure. Um, but the, des the design I think is gorgeous. I, I think it's a stunning design. It is the L mount uh, design, so you will be able to use the Sigma lenses on it, and also the Panasonic lenses that have been developed. Um, but it, it's got some great features. I mean, I think it's got the same sensor as the Panasonic SH-1. Uh, it's got internal stabilization of 5.5 stops um, from native SL lenses and adapted N lenses, so you can use the adaptive uh, M lenses if you want to. It's a 47 megapixel uh, full-frame CMOS sensor, 
Uh, the ISO range is 50 to 50,000 and enormous dynamic range and color uh, bit depth of 14 bits per RGB channel. Um, Laker uh, says the, uh, it delivers unparalleled level of detail and rendering quality. Uh, it does, um, it's got this image processor that uh, allows virtually zero shutter lag and 10 frames per second shooting and up to 20 frames per second electronic shutter. Uh, and it probably will have uh, rolling shutter though if you're dealing with the electronic shutter. The A9 seems to be the only camera that can do uh, with the 20 frames without rolling shutter due to that stack sensor. Um, but you can do 20 frames per second anyway if, if you need to. Um, someone just said too that it's got IP54 weather sailing. Wow, that is really cool. Um, the ability to suspend the sensor to shift and allows multiple shot modes so you can do your pixel shift uh, as well. But look at the video specs. I mean, just let me go to here for a second. Um, video specs on this camera are nuts really i mean for this is where sony seriously have to lift their game uh the laker has very respectable suite of video features with a headline resolution of 4k 60p captured from virtually the full width of the sensor so in other words there must only be a very small crop at even higher resolution 5k 30p so it'll give you 5k 30p mode is available from a crop region but we're still waiting for full details on exactly how much crop is employed. But it also says here that video can be shot in eight or 10 bit. So it has eight or 10 bit uh, mode straight to the memory card. Remember we're linked, we're limited to eight bit on Sony. We have been for four years. Um, eight bit to 10 bit mode straight to the memory card and it outputs 10 bit stream via full size HDMI port. Three video gamma profiles are available, so it's got the Rec 709, L-Log, um, and it's got the uh, 2020 and HLG 2020 as well. Uh, and it says, meanwhile, the SL2 can, of course, also capture HD video at up to 180 frames per second. A new sign mode essentially switches the SL2 into fully manual operation, including focusing, and translates key exposure settings into appropriate video language, shutter angle, ASA, and T-stop. Um, this camera is pretty nuts if you're talking about video specs. That's why I think that it's the, uh, the SH1 uh, sensor that's inside it because wow you're talking about 4k 60 10 bit uh, 180 frames per second uh, if you're in, in HD all the logs are there that you need HLG it looks looks amazing again the design is just beautiful the touch screen on the back apparently is, is gorgeous you can see here the interface looks stunning it will be a full touch screen as well this is where i'm saying that sony can up their game so much the screens are terrible uh, they i mean I, I don't want to say that but the the screens on the back are terrible on the sony cameras now uh compared to other manufacturers out there like i said i went to a workshop the other day with Yervent and i looked at the canos uh, the canon eos r and that screen killed my uh, Sony A9 and A7 III screen. It, it just killed it. I mean, if you look at the screen on the back of these, uh, it's beautiful. Uh, it really is beautiful. And then there's just some samples. I'll leave this link down below so you can have a look uh, as well. It does have two fast U, uh, SD card slots, uh, recording DNG and JPEG files. It's got uh, face body detection um, as well. Uh, and then there's just some sample shots that you can see coming through this as well if you wanted to uh, have a look at that. But it looks it looks amazing. I mean, it really does. And like I said, I think if I had the money, um, and money was no object, obviously it is, I'm trying to run a business, but if money was no object, I would go out and buy that camera the second that camera was released because I, th I think that's stunning. I, I really do think that's stunning. And the specs of that camera are amazing. Um, last story, let's, I just wanted to talk about this Panasonic because boy, they've given such a good firmware update. Uh, 1, 13, 40. Uh, Panasonic have just announced updates to, uh, their uh, multiple cameras actually. Um, 
it, they've actually had the firmware upgrades, the GH5, the GH5S, the G9, the S1, and the S1R, including a G9 boost. And what is the most amazing thing about this? I know Aaron was talking about this uh, the other day. Oh, Chris just said, I watched the interface demonstration on YouTube, uh, from a YouTuber in Germany, and oh my God, worth switching. Yeah, that's why I said, Chris, if I had the money, I would buy it in a heartbeat. That Laker, it's beautiful. Um... Panasonic have done an incredible update. What they've done is, I mean, they've updated everything, but you can now use Profoto wireless transmitters. So for the first time, you're able to use Profoto in TTL. I did used to use my Profoto on it, but it was all manual. You couldn't use TTL. Well, now you can, and it would probably work with HSS as well. But the interesting thing is that the biggest um, beneficiary of this is the G9. And the G9 is a, is a really great price camera. Basically, what's happened is the G9 has got now all the video features of the GH5. Now, the interesting thing here too is that if you're talking about stills photography, uh, when I use the GH5, if you're dealing with stills, uh, that is as fast as anything I've pr almost used. Like it, it is nuts, and low light particularly uh, was brilliant. So the still side of, of the Panasonic uh, is fantastic. Where it sucks is video, and, that, and that's the problem. You need to be using uh, manual focus, and that's what you'd have to do if you bought the Laker. Um, because the problem is with that uh, focusing system that it uses, it uses a detection where it will go, it looks at the subject, it goes past the subject, and then it will come back in. So if you're using it for video focus, you get that racking that comes in all the time. And, that, and that's the problem with the focusing ability of, of the Panasonics. Uh, and it's because they haven't gone the same way that Sony have gone and everyone else with phase detection, uh, you're getting that stupid thing where it comes out like that in, in video. Stills, brilliant. So if you're talking about a stills camera, like I said, uh, if you've ever used the G9, I've tested it. Um, if you've ever used the G9, that almost focuses like an A9. It is unbelievable how fast that G9 focuses uh, on stills. It, it's incredible. Um, it, it is really superb, but the video is, is just not good. And, and I do particularly like to use things on gimbals and stuff and have uh, that focusing work beautifully. If I was shooting manual video, it wouldn't matter. But they have put in this camera, which is amazing. They've put 10-bit 422 video capture. Listen to this, Sony. They've put 10-bit 422 video capture for 4K up to 30p and HDMI output at 10-bit 50 and 60p footage. It also gains variable frame rate. That worked fantastic uh, as well. And you can even install GH5's uh, paid upgrade of VLOG to capture waveform, uh, VLOG, uh, capture and waveform monitoring, highlighting how similar the two cameras are from a hardware perspective. Uh, the GH5 uh, and the G9 also gain animal detect autofocus, while both of these cameras uh, and the GH5 gains AF on near shift and AF on fast shift options to prior, uh, prioritize near or distant subjects. Uh, on the full frame side of things, the S1 and the S1R gain uh, CF Express capability, so you can now put CF Express cards in those uh, and function better with Sigma L mount lenses. Um, incredible. I mean, the G9, if you are a vlogger, uh, and you don't mind, you, you know, you've got to be aware of that um, uh, focus sort of pulling in and out a little bit. Uh, and you want a good stills camera, the G9 now is amazing. I mean, that, that is fantastic. You've got better uh, stills performance than what the GH5 has. And you've got the, basically the same video performance that the uh, GH5 has. I think you'll probably find that the, because they've done this, there'll be a GH6 uh, uh, coming fairly soon that will have way better features in the video side of things because that now, the G9, is an amazing camera. Um, amazing. So let's open it up quickly to Q&A. Uh, let me just put down here what time we are. 18.30. So let's have a quick look at Q&A. Uh, love to see what you guys think. Uh, if you want to, um, like I said, guys, if you're not watching later on, love some comments down below to see what you're thinking about all these stories. Um, I'm just trying to see what people are saying on here. 
Uh, Chris said, thanks, David. Use a lot of vintage lenses shooting landscape. Love that, Laker. Um, MJ said, I'd uh, put it right next to the Hasselblad. Guy with a camera, uh, IP54, weather ceiling, very cool. Um, Josh said, I've got the A7R3 used in excellent condition for $1,550. So you can save a lot over the A7R4. That, that you, you can, Josh. That's what I'm saying to you. Uh, if you look for a good deal, it can... It, it does have people and animal IAF. Exactly. The A7R3 is an amazing camera, guys. You don't have to buy the latest and greatest, remember. Often, you may be better off to buy the one prior that's still a brilliant camera, and the money you save, you buy better lenses, and then you'll get a much better result. Um... Tim said, the Laker does seem to be lacking from the focus side of things, even worse than Panasonic, although all reviews are pure production. Yeah, you, you're probably going to have to wait too. These are probably uh, not a final release firmware. Uh, but like I said, if they bait, it should be as good as what the Panasonics are in stills. Uh, and I've found that the Panasonics in stills are, are great. There's no problem in stills. It's video. It's that focus sort of racking that, that's the issue. Um... Jim said, I would buy the SL2 if I could justify the cost. Me too, Jim. I, I love it. I think that looks beautiful. Chris said, Laker is simply purely a sweet machine. I will buy when I can. Be my first Laker. And it's not, I shouldn't say it's not expensive. It's not expensive for what you would think you'd pay for a Laker of that quality. Uh, I think good on them for bringing that down to that price range. You know, it's starting to get into the realms of being, it's still expensive, but it's not ridiculously expensive like they used to be. So it, it really is, seems to be a great camera. Um, Rick said, the SL2 is an expensive toy if you're a wedding shooter. Yep, I agree, Rick. That's why I can't afford it. Um, Jim said, thumbs up. Thanks, Jim. Uh, Chris, oh, there was a donation there too. Solaris Records, $5.99 gave me. Thanks for the show. Thoughts on the uh, upcoming 1DX Mark III? I've done a video about that. Um, I, think, I think it's pronounced Solaris. Uh, I, I think that's an amazing camera. If that is as Canon have said, without any cripple hammer, Canon cripple hammer hitting it, that is going to be the best um fusion camera that's available or hybrid camera that is available and i'm talking about stills and video in the one camera uh, that is going to be incredible if it's released as it is I, I think it's outstanding if i was a canon shooter i would be wrapped with that release that's for sure if they can do that in their uh, eos r cameras um canon will take off uh, I really do think if they stop holding back and they gave that in the EOS R, it would be unbelievable. Um, where else are we? Uh, yeah, Chris said he watched the interface demonstration of that Laker in Germany, and oh my God, worth switching. Um, uh, Chris said, yes, it was only a beta, not the final version, pre-production, glass over sensor, better than the Panasonic Laker once that sensor are cut above. Um, Rick said, I don't know why Sony can't copy that menu interface. I know, Rick, how beautiful is that menu interface? That, that interface is, like I said, when you look at the interface back here, where are we? When you're looking at that interface, I mean, Sony make mobile phones. Like, I don't understand either. I mean, it is beautiful, isn't it? I mean, you have to admit, when you look at something like that, that is stunning. I mean, it is really a gorgeous interface. It would also be touchable as well. That's another big thing as well. Um, I agree with you, Rick. Sony need to up their ante in that regard. They really do. Like I said, they make great phones. There's no excuse. Uh, Josh said, I'm excited about the Panasonic firmware upgrades for my G9. So was Aaron, because Aaron discussed that in my photography videography school. Uh, Jim said, 100 thumbs up. We're 95. We're very close. We may get there, Jim. Thanks for the thumbs up, everyone. Really appreciate it. Um, Langston says, I wonder why they waited so long. Um, Woody said, my Sony a7 III locked up. I need to have it repaired. In the USA, any suggestion on who to use or who to avoid. Uh, guys, if you can help, um, 
Woody out there about who to say get it repaired through would be uh, great if you can let uh, Woody know. A show without a mention of Nick on, I know, Jim. Uh, it's, it's because Photomir, because in here I laugh out loud. <laughs> <coughs> Let me just have a quick drink. Wayne said uh, the Laker sensor has one glass element over the sensor than the S1R, so it's sharper and works well with the M and R lenses. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. Thanks for sharing that, Wayne. Jim says I have both the A7 III and the A7R III, both amazing. They are. They, they're great cameras. Um, M1 Hoff says, I got the new A7R 3 for 2199 I know, how great are the prices on that camera at the moment? It's amazing. Um, oh, no, Torben says, oh no, missed you by 79 minutes. Good to see you in here, Torben. Thank you so much for that donation, um, Solaris. Uh, Triple says, what's everybody using for the 50mm range in full frame? I'm using the Sony 55. Uh, I love that. I love the 55 1.8. It's one of my favourite lenses. I adore that lens. Um, Chris says, Leica will be better. The German reviewer was lo uh, was a lone camera by factory, so it's not the final firmware. Yep. Uh, Sony 55, Woody said, I love it. I love that lens. Uh, TW says, got my A6600 yesterday, and the new 16 to 55 2.8. Oh my God, it's a really great combo. Yep, certainly is. It's a great lens as well. Um, Jim said, I use my Sony 55 1.8. I love that lens. I love the 55 1.8. Great video lens as well. The Sigma 1.4 is good uh, too. Um, Torben says, Samyang AF 45 1.8 here. Um, We've made 104. Thank you so much, everyone. We've made 104. Thumbs up. Um, thanks, Jim. I've traded my lens and my a7R2 to upgrade. Now I have the a7 III and the a7R3. Great combo. Uh, Chris said, Laker moved all the buttons to the left, not on both sides of the screen. Perfect for using while shooting. Um, I th like I said, I think the design of that camera is one of the best designs I've ever seen. I, I think it's beautiful. I mean, I, it, I know design is subjective, but I do think the design of that camera is stunning. I, I love the design of that camera. It's gorgeous. It also has the 5.6 million dot EVF as well. Um, it, it's got so much going for that camera. Um, Sigma 50 1.4 Art. Um... Chris said, David, love the show. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, precision camera for sure for repairs in the USA. Thank you so much, Daryl, for helping there. Uh, Tony says, Fuji, Fuji, Fuji. Woody says, thanks, Gerald. Uh, Josh says, you bet. It's also more affordable than the Sony 55 1.8. Both are great. Uh, were you talking about the Sigma 50? I'm not sure which one you were talking about there. Um, Tony says, the 30, uh, Fuji 35 F2. Uh, that's a great lens, actually. Um, uh, ga gas kicking in, laugh out loud. I know, like I said, if I had money, I would go out and buy that Laker immediately. I'd put it on pre-order the second I could put it on. I just can't afford it. I mean, I, I have to be realistic. I mean, I'd have to buy a whole new system of lenses and everything else that goes in with it. But if you're talking about a pure design aesthetic that's, that's a gorgeous design, great spec camera, and you know it's going to have great results, um, it's brilliant. It really is brilliant. So we've reached the end of the show, guys. Uh, stay tuned for some reviews because I do have stacks of reviews coming up. I've got a heap of stuff that's been sent to me. Uh, so I'll be re I'll be going out over the weekend, actually, and doing some reviews of that. I've got some great stuff to share with you. Um, can't wait just to sort of show some of them because some of them are, are sort of groundbreaking in what I've seen. So stay tuned for that. Um, I'll be posting all next week all of these different reviews from all of this hardware that have been sent. Uh, love it if you could give me, uh, like I said, thumbs up. Thank you so much for everyone giving a thumbs up uh, and supporting the channel. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Uh, and apart from that, everyone, I think I'll see you in the next uh, video. I think it's time to go and get my, in a New York accent, which is terrible, but uh, coffee. <laughs> Have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks so much for the support, everyone, too. And thank you so much for all the donations today. I really appreciate that, everyone. Bye for now.